Hello everyone, I am Emre Kocit. I am a doctoral researcher in the University of Luxembourg. I am preparing computer science, data science, machine learning related content in this channel. And in this video, I will show genetic algorithm with Python with an example. If you look at the outline of this video, firstly I will explain evolutionary approach and the fundamentals of genetic algorithm. Then I will explain the problem and we will solve the problem with genetic algorithm using Python. Let's start with the evolutionary approach. You can estimate from the name, evolutionary approach in computer science is an output of evolutionary theory inspiration. Researchers are inspired by the nature and natural selection principle, Darwinian evolution theory. Then adapt these principles and theory to the different computer science problems, optimization problems. In evolutionary approach, we can think each solution as an individual organism. Then possible solutions, in other words, potential individuals will generate a population, solution population. Important point here is, initial population will be generated randomly. Then according to the natural selection principles, new generations will be generated. And with each generation, our individuals, our solutions will improve and will be more powerful and effective. And biological operations such as crossover, mutation, etc. will be used during this process. Finally, the optimal individual will be created. Now it may seem abstract, not clear, but don't worry, after explaining the next part, genetic algorithm, it will be more concrete. And especially after the Python implementation part, it will be more tangible. In computer science, you can see different evolutionary presentations such as genetic programming, differential evolution algorithm, evolutionary programming, etc. And genetic algorithm is one of them. You will see its details and implementation with Python in this video. Okay, let's see the genetic algorithm. Genetic algorithm is one of the most powerful and successful evolutionary algorithms. We can categorize it as population-based meta-heuristic algorithm. You will understand why it is population-based and meta-heuristic after this video. Of course, there are alternative optimization algorithms such as end colony optimization, particle swarm optimization, or artificial bee optimization algorithm. They are also helpful for different optimization problems. Most crucial point is survival of fittest principle for the genetic algorithm. As I said in the evolutionary approach slide, we will create solutions generations and the fittest ones will survive and inherit their characteristics to the next generations. And lastly, genetic algorithm is proposed by John Henry Holland, who was an American scientist and died in 2015. As you see, it was proposed, the algorithm was proposed in 1992. So the topic has 30 years history in the literature. If you search genetic algorithm terms, you will find a huge amount of studies. After this introduction, now let's see the important operators or phases of genetic algorithm one by one. As I said before, think each solution as an individual. We will create different valid solutions randomly to generate our initial population. This will be our first generation. Then we will select some of the solutions based on survival fittest principle. We will select mostly better solutions, but be careful, we will not select the best solutions in the generations. We will randomly select some of the solutions and then we will use the fittest ones, the better ones. This randomly statement is vital here. I will show tournament selection, but there are different selection techniques like wheel roulette selection. You can check them too. After selection process is completed, selected ones will be our parent solutions. We will use them to generate new solutions. For example, we will select two of them and let's call them parent 1 and parent 2. At this point, like in the nature, we will implement crossover operation. Parent 1 and parent 2 will be the parameters of this operation. And we will create a new solution, child solution from the parent 1 and parent 2. Then we will add this solution, this child solution to our new generation. This process will be repeated generation by generation until we terminate the process or we find the uh, optimal solutions, optimal individual. Okay, I explained the big picture and the general flow of genetic algorithm. Now let's see the fundamentals and their details. 
You can say I understand why it is evolutionary algorithm because of the big picture, but why is the name genetic algorithm? Now you will understand that part too. In genetic algorithm, each solution, each individual is represented in a chromosome form. Remember DNA and the DNA packages, in other words, chromosomes. This picture is an example of chromosome sequence. I took it from the study of Gilbot and other authors. Maybe you can remember the letters, each of them represents some nucleoids like adenine, guanine, timine, stosine. But of course, these nucleoids are not important for us. Important issue is in genetic algorithm, we will use chromosome sequence structure to represent our solutions. Of course, we can use different letters like in the example or numbers. Think that each letter is an abbreviation of city names in your country and you want to make a route. From city A to city G, this route can be a solution for you and in genetic algorithm, we will show this route like a chromosome, like this form. From now, when I say chromosome, it is same with the solution. Okay, this slide is very really important. Now, I will show a typical genetic algorithm flow and you should focus on this part. And if you understand this part, then you will understand the genetic algorithm very well. Firstly, I will show the flow, then I will explain each with examples. Okay, let's start. Step one is initialization. We will randomly produce solutions and chromosomes and we will create a generation. So output of this step is a solution generation, our first generation. And step two is selection. After initialization, we will select two chromosomes, then they will be our parent chromosomes. We will create a child chromosome solution from them. And step three is crossover. We will use the output of previous step, parent 1 and parent 2, and implement crossover operation. There are alternative crossover techniques like 1 point or 2 point, 2 points crossover. Actually, for each step, alternative methods are available. I will show one of them and main idea is same for all. So whatever crossover method you use, you will obtain a new chromosome, child chromosome after this crossover operation. Then you can directly add this child to the next generation as a step 4 or you can implement another important operation, mutation. I will call step 4 for the mutation but remind that this is not an obligation, actually you shouldn't implement this operation to all solutions, to all chromosomes. Like in the nature, some of the chromosomes should be mutated. After mutation, again, we will add our mutated or non-mutated child to the next generation. And we will repeat this flow until we have enough population size for the next generation. Usually, previous generation size is considered at this moment. Finally, next generation is created. If this new generation provides optimal or sufficient solutions, uh, sufficient chromosomes for us, then we can terminate the whole process. If not, we will continue to create new generations. Okay, if you understand this flow, you will also understand genetic algorithm. Now, let's think each step for a use case. Initialization. Think the previous example, you have a still list and you want to visit all, so you want to create an optimal road for yourself. As an initialization, you should create random but valid routes in chromosome structures. Then, selection step. According to your selection method, select two of them. These will be your parent chromosomes. And the next step is crossover. Implement one point crossover, that means Select a random point in your chromosomes and divide them, like that. Then pick the first part of the parent one, and this will be our first part of the child chromosome. Then pick parent two and add each point in the order of parent two if that point is not available in the child chromosome. Let's do it together. As you see, this is the first part of our parent one. So I'm adding this part to our child chromosome. Then I will check parent 2 from the beginning. For example, D is not available here, so I'm adding D to here. But A and F are available here, so I will pass them. But B and G are not available here, so I will add B and G. And C and E is available in the first part, so I will pass them too. So at the end of the process, I will obtain something like that. As you see, this is 
this exact the same part of the parent one, this part, but this is different. If we implement the same thing to parent two, for example, this is the first part of parent two, and this C, E, and G from the parent one, but in the order of parent one. Don't forget that you can implement different crossover methods. It is also related with the problem. You, if your chromosome has only one and zero, then you can just take the first part of the parent one and second part of the parent two and combine them. But for our example, each letter represents a city and we want to visit each city once. Therefore, each letter should be available in our chromosome exactly once. Okay, let's continue with mutation step. Remember that we will not mutate all child chromosomes. We will mutate chromosomes based on a mutation rate. For example, according to that rate, we will only mutate, let's say, 10% of the old population. So here, just pick one child chromosome. And the implementation is very simple. Select two letters like in this example E and D. And just swap them. Then you will have a new chromosome. And for example, do not implement mutation operation to this child and add these two blue ones to new chromosomes to the next generation. And that's all. If you don't understand any step, I strongly recommend to pause the video and try to understand that step, especially before coding Python. Now you can say, okay, I understand we will implement survival of fittest principle in the selection of parent chromosomes. but how can we know which chromosome is the fittest? Answer is with the help of fitness function and fitness value. You can estimate that fitness value is an output of the fitness function. And the idea is simple. Check the fitness values of two chromosomes and select the better one. But how can we create a fitness function and what is that? Actually answer depends on the problem and the objective. Let's think our root example. We have eight cities to visit eight points and two different roads for this problem let's assume that our objective is finding the shortest route shortest total distance therefore i should calculate the distance for each route for each chromosome let's assume that distance or let's say cost of these roads are like that 12 hours for the first one and the 16 hours for the second one so the first one is better according to our goal, our objective, because if the distance is lower, then it's a better solution for us. In other words, there is an inverse proportion here between the distance and the objective. Therefore, I can define the fitness function like that. 1 divided by cost or distance of the chromosome. If you calculate the fitness value for these roots, you will see the first value is better. As a summary, you should define your fitness function according to the problem and objective regarding the problem constraints. This is quite important for the success of genetic algorithm. Okay, we saw genetic algorithm fundamentals with examples. I hope you understand the fundamentals and the flow. Now, let's look what is the problem. Why we need genetic algorithm? Why uh, is genetic algorithm a good solution for these problems? Let's assume that you have four points to visit. You want to calculate the shortest path for these points. How can you do that? One of the first approaches is you can calculate all combinations and find the best one. Do you think it is easy? Then my question, do you know what is the total number of combinations for these four points? You can easily calculate it is 24. Actually, it is n factorial. If you have four points maybe it's not a big deal but what about if you have 20 points i will show in the next slide but before that i want to show the complexity chart as you see the worst complexity for the algorithm is n factorial so if you develop an algorithm with n complex n factorial complexity think again it's not an efficient way we need to find a more efficient way to do and of course, genetic algorithm is one of these ways. Then what about the genetic algorithm's complexity? In general, we can say that the complexity of the genetic algorithm is G times N times M. 
G is the numbers of generations, N is the population size, and M is the individual size. For this example, M is 4. Let's compare them. If we have 20 points to visit in the first approach in the brute force, we have to calculate 20 factorial combinations. As you see, it is over 1000, million, billion, trillion, quadrillion, and uh, cantillion. And this is only for 20 points. Search if the point number is 200. But if you look at the genetic algorithm, then generation number is 100. And the population size is also 100. And the individual size is 20 like this. Then the result is 200,000. We can estimate the difference when the number is getting bigger. Okay, we understood the problem and why genetic algorithm is a good and efficient solution. Now we will use Python to implement genetic algorithm. Our use case will be road planning and before coding, let's see the problem details. First of all, we should understand the problem very well. Road planning with genetic algorithm. Remember that fitness function will be decided based on the objective and our objective is the finding optimal route in terms of distance, the shortest path in here. And we have three major requirements. Firstly, we need to visit all locations, all points. We cannot miss any of them. And the second one is we need to return to the first point, station. Think that we have a vehicle or drone or something for delivery or let's say trash collection. And at the end of this route, it should return to the base. And our third requirement is we have only one vehicle for all points. Like in this figure, we will create a route something like that. And so this is a typical traveling salesman problem. In other words, with this example, we will solve traveling salesman problem with genetic algorithm using Python. Now we are ready for the Python implementation. I will use PyCharm as an editor. You can use any of them as start.